You, you feel this, this nervousness on the phone there? Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. Well, I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You gotta make some phone calls. Hang up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Packernet After Dark. This is the call-in show of the Packernet Podcast Network. If you'd like to check in, call in, whatever it is, uh, please feel free to do so. The phone number here is 608-501-0718. New callers go shut up to the front of the line. (laughs) Whatever. Um... Just a couple housekeeping things. I'm sure you guys are tired of my complaining, but you're nowhere near as annoyed as I am with everything. So I'm just going to tell you right now, I recorded a podcast for you. I did. You can call me a liar. I don't care. I did it. And um, been having a lot of issues trying to figure out how to... This all stemmed from... I was using Audacity for years. Very free, very simple. I mean, very free is a silly way to put it, but it's free. It's very simple. And i uh, been having a lot of issues with just lagging, right? The, the whole issue essentially has been, when I say a word, it's about one second later that it gets recorded. So there's delays. But the bigger issue is the delay from when I say it to when I'm done talking, I just push P or spacebar or whatever it is, and it pauses. The problem is, I, it, it hasn't finished record. So it cuts off my words. It cuts off everything else. It just, it's been causing some issues. Um... And so I, I moved on to something else, and it's web-based, and for the second time in a row, it's just completely froze on me. I mentioned last time I had to go back and, like, record the recording. So I had to listen to the whole thing while recording it, and it was just, it was such an unbelievable pain. But I got it. I decided to stick with it and uh, recorded this podcast. I went over to Udio. Here's the, uh, let's see if I got the song ready for you. What is the one? I think it was this one. Are we ready to play it? I'll just play it for you. You're not going to be able to hear it. It was just because I, I made fun of the Dallas Cowboys again, so I came up with this one. Nope, this one. There we go. So, fantastic song. I go to add it. I had some issues, so I shut down all my browsers and I brought it back up. Well, it didn't save. Again, second time now. It didn't save, so I added it. There was only 13 minutes recorded. I'm just pissed. Anyways, I'm throwing that all in the garbage. Uh, Brief recap. The Cowboys are a mess. Uh, There is an article over at The Athletic. It's a pretty good article. It, it just talks to a bunch of agents. Oh, man, there's some good stuff in there. I may have to go revisit a couple of the topics, but I'm not doing it today because I'm just frustrated. But it's a very good article, and um, the Dallas Cowboys just get eviscerated. They were uh, just seen as a team in complete disarray. There's a whole bunch of stuff with Jerry Jones. He, he threw an absolute uh, fit when somebody asked if he's ever going to just hire a GM to do GM stuff, and he's going on a whole thing about, you know, nobody can effing do the job like I can, and all, uh, just all this crazy stuff, and it's just a complete mess. A couple other minor news and notesy things, but uh, then we went and got to a bunch of calls. Unfortunately, those calls are just gone. I'm not going to redo those calls. I'm very sorry. I want to say it was TJ, I think we started with TJ in Alabama, Jim from Arkansas, Garrett, Uncle Rico, Uncle Rico, and Randy. You guys called in on Sunday and Monday. Very, very sorry. Please call back in if you'd like me to do it. Otherwise, we're just moving on. Um, So, strangely, what I've decided to do is just record videos. Because this has been the only thing that has not caused me any problems. It's maybe not the easiest thing in the world, but it's probably what I should be doing anyways. Clayton's been doing it right from the start. Because then it doubles up as video content. So... Please keep sending in any gripes or complaints about stuff, because I do want this to be better quality than it has been. I've just been having some issues trying to find the right things. I spent a lot of time today looking at different options, different recording stuff. Unfortunately, anything on my computer has the same lag problem. 
And then um, I was trying to find something online, and I said, you know, this this works. It's maybe not the best thing. It's certainly not the worst thing, though. It, it works fine. It's got a little pause button right here. I just got to click it. But we're just going to do call-ins today. Um, we've got uh, quite a few. We've got, it says 24. I think some of them are from back in the day, though. Let me start getting rid of some of those. Let's just call it around 20 calls that we have to get to. Here come the classic yods. Um, all right. Let's get started. with omar the make sure that we got this thing all set up right i believe it is hopefully you're hearing this otherwise <laughs> if i go back and listen to this and there's no audio i just quit but omar what you got going on man what's going on the one firefighter how y'all doing so i just got back from a call and at the fire station i'm sitting down and i'm looking at the little nfl notifications packers released uh starter starter they drafted in the sixth round and i'm like hmm and i'm in my mind I was thinking about uh, the safety, but we just them in the seventh round. I was like, oh, they probably did a typo or something. So I wasn't paying attention. And then I looked, and I was like, it was a game of I was like, what? Like, I know he missed that field goal uh, that was close, and we all wanted him gone. But if we're going to keep Greg Joseph, I'm like, man, Greg Joseph won't too much better. Yeah. So I would have thought, at least money-wise, it would have been better just to keep Carlson until you could find a better replacement. Cause, cause Joseph was struggling at the end. Like, so I, I I'm confused. I, I, you, you had did this whole episode to make me believe. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. And then I decided to give him a chance. I'm sorry. They, 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 they let him go. It's kind of funny. So uh, I don't know. It's just, that's kind of crazy. But anyway, go back, go. Um, hopefully we get somebody, sign somebody else new and better. Cause I don't like Greg Joseph, but. Anyway, I got a call, so I can go. Go back, go. Yeah, and that's that's all my fault. I mentioned that on the the ensuing podcast. Everything I said was wrong this year. Um, there's been. Are you still going here? Why am I hearing buzzing? Oh, it, <laughs> his call goes for another minute of just a slight hiss in the background. Um. Yeah, I. I everything I said was essentially wrong this year. Um, because they just they did a lot of things that that they didn't do and. One of the other things that just never happens is really a lot of guys getting picked up off waivers. Fans are always worried about people getting picked up off waivers, and nobody ever does. That's not to say it's impossible, but to have, you know, our last time anybody got picked off of waivers was Taysom Hill. And then this year we have three guys get picked up. And again, it is a positive for the Green Bay Packers, and it does happen, but... You know, I'm just, uh, again, when I'm doing this stuff, I'm just playing the odds and I'm going based off of what I've learned, really not not even over my lifetime, because I haven't been paying that close attention my whole lifetime, basically since the podcast started. So we're talking six, seven years, you start to notice some patterns of the way, you know, you know, fans are going to react a certain way. And I kind of give the same speech every time. And usually I'm right about stuff. But this year, whole lot of stuff was was off. You know, Anders has got the job locked up. Anders is gone. Um, you know, never would have thought Anthony Johnson, you know, I thought Anthony Johnson, not, not that this is really a part of it, but I'm just trying to think of examples. Um, AJJ getting released, I guess wasn't the biggest surprise, but then losing him would have been shocking. Um, Pratt look at and go, okay, we got to kind of realign some of our thoughts. I think one of the biggest things that I have to look at for Brian Gutekunst in particular is the fact that he is, um, he is very much, he, he, and he mentioned it, I, I am not as patient, I think he specifically said with special teamers or kickers or whatever, but I, I think that's just a general rule. He is not as patient as Ted Thompson. Ted Thompson was patient, I think overly patient. I think the aggressiveness of Gutekunst is good, but I'm I'm wondering if he's maybe a little bit too aggressive. He mentioned J.K. Scott. It was a mistake to get rid of him. I wonder if this is also going to be a mistake, getting rid of this kicker and, and going with a guy that, that is an undrafted free agent that's proven very little in his career. I forget I forget his name, but he's he's now our guy. Um I'm hopeful, fingers crossed. You know, he's a Packer, so I support him, but um yeah, we gotta gotta kind of reassess some things. I mean, I think Gutekunst gets caught up in in the all in mode. And again, the all in people hate him because they said he didn't go all in, 
and I think the non-all-in people get frustrated with Gutekunst because he does go all-in. He can't win either way. But um, I don't know. I mean, there's certainly an aggressiveness there, and there's certainly a belief of we have to do what's best for now. And I think he agreed with what a lot of people said, that Andres isn't the right guy for now. But I don't think we have a right guy for now, unless we just get very lucky with this new guy. We'll see. But again, I um, have to kind of realign my thoughts because I think I'm still stuck in Ted Thompson mode and Gutekunst is not Ted Thompson, even though there are, of course, some similarities. There are definitely some differences. Uh, Trevor in Virginia, what's going hey, on? Hey, Ryan, Trevor, Virginia. I know it's been talked about a good bit, but I'm just, I'm over the whole Sunday ticket price nonsense. If you don't have... By the way, sorry about this. If you're watching the video, I don't know if this is even getting posted. It probably might as well. Um, I had the AI generate images for each of the callers. I think because everybody's a Packer fan, it assumes everybody's fat. So I apologize if these are unflattering photos, but here we go. Sorry, I put the stupid phone numbers up there again. Let me put that back down. I keep doing that. Here we go. It's the most expensive. It's four hundred eighty dollars. At 17 weeks a game, that is $28 a week. If you're telling me a single person that wouldn't pay $28 a week to get the game at home, right. you, no, that's not true. That's what everybody would pay that to get it at home. As people have said, when I would go to the bar in college, you have to get there like two hours before game time to make sure you get a place because some people were trying to do it. And you spend, back then I was spending 60 to 80 bucks to watch the game. Now, I'm, you know, it, prices, it'd be over 100 bucks a week. For me and my wife to go sit somewhere and watch the game. And it's just, oh my goodness. Um, sorry. Um, anyway, it's just like the fact that people are saying that they wouldn't pay it. It's just like the price is not bad. The price is very reasonable for the product you're getting. And you get to watch it in the comfort of your home. You want to go to the bar and watch it, whatever. That's your thing to do that. Whatever. Have fun. Not, nothing against that, but. Yeah, I think the price is prohibitive. And oh no, week one's on Peacock. I had to pay six dollars for a month of Peacock that I can cancel right away and still have access for a month, and I paid six dollars to get the game. Oh my god. You had a couple of monsters at the gas station it's more than six dollars. It's like let's let's come on, people. It's ridiculous. That's why this lawsuit got thrown out. Nonsense. The only reason maybe the lawsuit could stand is because you couldn't get it if you didn't have direct TV. YouTube TV YouTube doesn't make you have YouTube TV to get it. So now it's definitely way better. Um, even if you had to pay a little more without YouTube TV. But Direct TV, that was the one gripe I always had was that you couldn't get it unless you also had Direct TV. They should have just offered it by itself too. But anyway, that's enough of that. 53 man, cut down's coming. Already some surprises. Anders I found is a huge surprise. The whole quarterback trade thing was very surprising to me too. I'm curious to see how the rest of it shakes out. By the time you play this, it probably already has, but anyway. Go back, go. I think maybe the the biggest problem that people have is is the big giant upfront cost Pe everyone's having a hard time getting off the phone today um people see and he said like 700 dollars. i've already said the price is not 700 dollars. There, there's some weird thing where if you're on apple apparently um and you go into the app and try to do it everything is upcharged because apple charges all these people so they pass the charge on to you don't do that go on your pc or something else Go to the website on your phone. Don't use the app because everything through your, I don't know what you call it, the, it's not an app store, but the whatever. Um, it's It gets additionally charged. It's like 350 bucks, and that's for YouTube TV, which is an expensive thing to own anyways, as well as NFL Sunday Ticket. And if you look at over, what is it, six months? What, September, October, November, December, January, five-ish, six-ish months. It's, call it $60, $70 a month. It's not that much. I'm paying that much for Hulu right now. I don't even have the... I'm, I'm going to consider switching, to be honest. i got to talk to my wife about it because she likes the Hulu thing. And I've also tried to get YouTube TV, and it keeps saying, no, you're not allowed. There's some kind of weird thing with my payment. I ticked off Google somehow. I don't know what I did wrong. But now that I'm doing the math, it's like, I, I think I should switch because I can get the, the Sunday ticket thing for cheap. And it's significantly cheaper than it was when it was on um, whatever you call it. But yeah, when you look at... You know, $700, which again is not even the real price. If you look at $350, $400, whatever it is, it's like, holy crap, that's a lot of money. But if you look at how much these streaming services cost, and maybe people don't use them. If you don't have YouTube TV or Hulu or whatever, because you just have regular TV, you don't have what... I understand that's a shocking number, but I'm spending 
what am I spending for Hulu? It's, it's a ridiculous amount of money for Hulu Live. Very expensive so that I can watch Packer games and whatever else, essentially to have cable. Um, so, I don't know. I, I, I think it's maybe some weird combination of that. But anyways, why don't we go ahead and take our first break. We'll come back and hear from Uncle Rico. Yo, Ryan, uncle, Rico. This is a good one. Unhappy guy, your unhappy uncle. <laughs> Dude, how are we going to win 17 straight games if our kicker is a turdlet? I mean, I get it that they cut Carlson because he's Carlson, uh, but. Sorry, I think that might have been snacks. Here we go. Here's the right one. <laughs> there he is. All right, let's get the call going again. Sorry. Joseph is a proven loser. Come on. Oh, that's frustrating for me. I mean, one season of sucking is different than five seasons of sucking. Yeah. In my opinion. Joseph is not getting any better. He's never going to get any better. And Carlson, maybe he's not either, but he hasn't proven that he's not going to get any better. Joseph has already proven he sucks. So... Uncle Rico. I'm not recanting the 17 wins, by the way. We're still going to okay. do it. We're just going to do it without a kicker. Okay? We're just going to have to <laughs> overcome some obstacles. That's what's going to happen. We're going to, we're just going to send, um, receivers into the end zone. Kicks not required. All right. Rico out. Yeah. Braden Narvison is the name of our new kicker. And, you know, the funny thing with Braden Narvison. Well, th th there's a couple caveats. One is like the guy never misses extra points, which is which is great, and he's better from short distances. It's very iffy from longer distances. Um, couple caveats. First of all, extra points in college are like f for f 20 yards or something like that. It's not 33 like it is in the NFL, so that number is likely to plummet. We don't really know much about the guy um, in terms of his. He has the leg. Clearly, and I don't think the Packers would touch him if, if he didn't, but he has the leg to hit longer ones. The accuracy doesn't seem to be there, so I'm guessing it's similar. Here's here's what I'm just assuming, because I'm, I'm trying to just assume it's not because Gutekunst and company are stupid. They're really smart, and they're doing the right thing. This is what I'm telling myself. Um, when you look at Anders Carlson, they said, this guy has all the leg in the world. We just got to, you know, we can identify a problem with his kicking motion or whatever, and we can fix it, and that's going to be... So you look at a guy and you say, at least as long as he's a project, he's probably going to hit most of these shorter yardage ones. He's going to be better at extra points than Anders Carlson and you know 30-yard kicks, whatever. He's going to be better at that than Anders, ideally. In the meantime, we're going to try to tweak it so that we can get better at 50 yards, so he's not hitting at 33%. So... Um, I don't know, I mean, but we got to see. We just got to see. There's already a bunch of hype coming out about uh, Braden. Um, he was crushing kicks from 57 yards or something. Jair goes up to Matt LaFleur. He's like, I like this kid. You know, I don't know if this is just Packers propaganda <laughs> or what exactly is going on. But um, I, I listen, there's a part of me that's a little bit excited. It, it, that fan part of you... That just says, oh man, this is new, so it's going to be great. New is great because you don't see the bad yet. We liked, well, I guess we didn't really like Anders. We generally like new um, because you don't know it's going to be bad. I mean, you look at, like, Anders got a great leg, whatever, I don't know. And then when it got bad, everybody hated Anders, and then we got a new guy, and, you know, now there's at least some level of optimism that we're allowed to have because we don't know that he's bad. Um I don't know, man. We'll see. But I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point now where you know we're pivoting off. I mean, these calls are still from Tuesday, so that stuff is fresh. I'm excited to start pivoting toward the regular season and saying, yeah, I'm excited about seeing this guy make an extra point. But the more exciting thing is what came before that when Jordan Love just threw a dot to freaking uh, you know Jaden Reed across the middle for a touchdown. That's the real exciting part. Now we just hopefully don't have to hold our breath for the extra point. I don't know. Just uh, just a hope of mine. Snacks, what's going on, man? Let's pull up that Snacks image again. That's a classic. Daddy! Hey! What's well, going on, buddy? 
guts have come and gone, my man. <laughs> and just because I know you love talking about kickers. Yeah, we're doing that. Plenty. They got rid of them. Yep. And listen, man, I, I'm with you. It, none of it matters. It really doesn't. But think about the extra points, field goals missed in some of those big games, including San Francisco. You know, would have been nice if those had gone. And I'm not saying that Joseph or whoever we end up having is going to be the answer. And it's probably going to be a sore spot all year. But I know for a fact that we aren't going to have to get nervous with Carlson standing over everything. Hopefully, um, we'll see. That counts or matters. Fingers crossed. And that, I think, is probably the biggest luxury of this situation. Yeah. So, I'll take it. And the fact that Judy drafted him, they still cut him, I think that's that's got to mean something because, you know, he doesn't want to get rid of his draft picks. Right. And Keith Barr made it. Yeah. I'm kind of excited about that. He's going to do something big for us this year, buddy. You just wait. <laughs> I'm not going to know when. All right. But he will. <laughs> and I'm going to call in and scream his name just like I do everybody else. Let's get this season going, man. I am ready. Yep. Thanks, man. Well, yeah, that's that's exactly where I'm at. You know, it's you, you kind of hem and hot. Like I'm looking at it, going, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I guess who cares about Anthony Johnson Jr. in the in the grand scheme of things, like whatever. You know, we're, we're excited about Bullard and and Williams especially, and you know Oladapo. They decided to keep, which is like, holy crap, that's pretty cool. That's a it's a great sign for him that um, you know they're they're really optimistic about what he's able to do and dude we got josh jacobs on our team now two years ago that was the number one running back in football he's big he's strong he can take a lot on his shoulders we're gonna have a rookie running back coming in and playing so we got these wide receivers in jordan and the tight ends like watch somebody's about to break out i said musgrave so it's probably going to be Kraft that just absolutely starts to dominate but either way it doesn't matter the defense oh the defense so listen we can we can talk about debose we can talk about Heath and the big impact he's going to make if you want. And I agree, he's going to have something happen uh, at some point. I don't think he's going to be a pivotal, central part of the offense. But, yeah, he's going to have some big touchdown or probably like a big fourth down conversion or something at some point this season. But, um, man, I'm getting excited. I'm getting, I'm getting juiced, boys and girls. I am getting juiced. Uncle Rico, what's going on? Uh, this Uncle Rico, what's going on? Yo, Ryan! Yo! It's your Uncle Rico. Rico! Uncle Rico is happy today, Ryan. All right, good. Uncle Rico couldn't be happier. Uncle like Rico it. is elated. I'm happy you're well, happy. Why am I talking about Uncle Rico in the third person? Mm. It's like Uncle Rico's a psychopath. <laughs> That's what your picture looks I guess. like. Anyways... Bit. The Packers got a real kicker, I think. I mean, at least we got one that hasn't proved he stinks. So exactly, that's, that's all I care that was exactly about. That's exactly my point. Give the guy a chance. He hasn't proved he sucks. Uh, from what I read, sounds like he's he's maybe the guy. That'd be awesome if he was still our kicker in like ten years. That would be sweet. Anyways, I'm just so excited they got rid of uh, Joseph. I'm sure the guy's a great guy, but I, he doesn't he doesn't uh, kick well. So sure. see you, buddy. Sorry, go back to Australia, whatever. Um, anyways, <laughs> also, big surprise, the Bears signed Samari Ture to the practice squad. Yeah, exactly. Anybody shocked there? Bunch of scavenging losers. Break them out. So uh, here's our boy, Braden Narvison, right here. You can see his field goals. He always grades out really well. Um 90, 80, 70, 80 in his four, kind of three years. I guess he didn't do it a ton as much as in Kentucky. Um, but the extra points are the big thing here. You can see he made 196 of 197, which is 99.5%. Again, it's an easier field goal to make. And then if you look at his 30 yarders, he's 85%, which hopefully that doesn't hold up because that actually kind of sucks for extra points. You know, 85% is not great for field goals in general, much less in the 30 yard range. But we'll just be excited anyways. Um, and that he is 81% in the 40-yard range, 33% in the 50-yard range. I mean, I'm, I'm not super jacked about all of these numbers, but, um, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. 
And then here he is, what he did in the preseason that got him a job as our starting kicker. He made two extra points. He made six of seven field goals. He was two of two in the 20-yard range, two of two in the 30-yard range, one of one in the 40-yard range, and then one of one in the 50-yard range. And I guess his one miss was from like 56. And it was similar to what happened to Anders. He actually made the first one, but he got iced, and then he missed the second one. At least that's what I was told. I didn't go back and watch it, 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 whatever. And then again, uh, apparently the reports coming out are positive um, in terms of how good of a job he's doing. So um, I think we can keep rolling here. Let's do uh, Uncle Rico call again. Yo, Ryan, it's Uncle Rico. What's up? Back. I forgot. I was so excited about the signing of this kicker, I forgot to mention that it just ran through my little tiny brain that mm. um that uh goody it's a tricky he's a tricky fellow if if we don't think that was his plan i think we're probably wrong right i mean keeping joseph when we know he didn't want joseph sure. but he kept joseph put carlson on the old waivers there uh to see i don't know I mean, maybe give him a chance to get picked up by another team or something like that. I'm really not sure what that would be, but I'm pretty sure he didn't want Joseph on the roster, but he kept him on there because it made us look like that was what we settled on or something. I don't even know, but it just sounds like he had some kind of a plan Mm -hmm. and that he was thinking the uh, tanks were going to try to sneak this guy through waivers because their kicker is like an antique or something. Although accurate, he's very antiquey, I believe. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> and I'd have to think, I don't know that the Packers, being as we are a contending team, that this guy had to, uh, this kicker from Tennessee had to go through, um, I mean, we weren't the first choice, right? I mean, doesn't the stinky, it's kind of like the draft, doesn't the crappiest team get the first chance at uh, picking a guy off waivers or something? I mean, if something anybody like that. else that's crappier than us, which is mostly everyone but like five teams, we would uh, we would have to let them take them, right? Is that how it works? Let waiver claims that crap teams get them first. Anyways, I'm pretty sure Goody had a plan, and it worked out, and I bet he's just as happy as I am, as all Packer fans should be today, because now we reign supreme in awesomeness. Later. Rico out. Oh, it was nice to hear from Trucker Bob this morning. Bob, I missed you. <laughs> I love you, man. Yeah, I'm hopeful to start getting some uh, some of the callers in uh, that we haven't heard from in a while. Start coming back around. It's uh, regular football time, especially Pedro uh, down in Brazil. I, I know um, he no longer has access to Twitter anymore, so need to get him back on the lines. We need to make sure we can maintain communication with the guy. Um, also, I hope you're doing well. I didn't know about the wildfires and whatnot. And you said you were close to there, to the to the stadium, and there's like 30 cities around this. That was another topic I talked about is the real danger that this, this game is going to be canceled. Um, I don't know how real it actually is. It was just in some art. It wasn't like an ESPN or anything. It was some, I don't know what it was. But apparently the air quality is terrible there now because there's wildfires all around Sao Paulo and... Um, and whatnot. I don't know, man. I just, I, anyways, we, we all hope you're doing well down there and everything's going okay. Let us know. Drop us a line that uh, you're doing good. Send a text or whatever. I don't care, but uh, just let us know. Everything's everything's gravy. Uh, but yeah, man, we're hopeful to uh, two things. I'd like. I'd like everybody to return if you haven't called in in a while. And uh, number two, some new callers, man. We haven't had new callers in a while. Just just the OGs hanging in through the off season, I think. So now that the regular season's here, got to get some callers. We've got the number down at the bottom, 608-501-0718. As I said, new callers go to the front of the line. Tell you what, let's um, start. I'm st- my mood's coming back a little bit. I-, I was in a bad mood. I'm in a good mood. Let's not take a break. Let's get Uncle Rico's final call here. Um, <laughs> I can read this. I don't know what's going on. Uh, go ahead. Uh, hello, Brinley? This is your uh, uncle, twice removed. I don't know how it works. Your uncle, what am I? Your great uncle. Uh-huh. That's what it is. Hello, Brinley. This is your great uncle, Rico. Hi. 
<laughs> I will make sure that she gets that. I will bring her down here, put the headset on, and uh, tell her she got a call from Uncle Rico. I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. I know uh, Brinley was on with me the other day. That's probably why you're saying that. She's been she's been kind of in uh, dad mode lately. She wants to hang around dad all the time. So it's it's uh, you know she's tiny. She she wants to be around mom and dad. So it's. I don't want to tell her, like, get away from me, so yeah, whatever. If I can do the podcast and whatnot, then it is what it is. Um, all right, I guess we'll take a break now. <laughs> um, we'll take a break, and on the other side of the break, we've got A.A. Ron from Eau Claire. We do have Trucker Bob again. We got uh, Nico from Idaho. Uncle Rico's back again. We'll see how many of these we can get through. Also got uh, Joe from Connecticut, Nate, Devin, Garrett from Southern Illinois, Steve in Alaska, and Jesse from Oregon. Um, Let's see how many of these we can get. I think we can do a lot. That's what I think. Also, Ticket King, oh, Ticket King. Check out uh, lowest ticket prices, Wisconsin-based, Green Bay and Wisconsin, big Packer fans, et cetera, et cetera. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, Ryan, it's A.A. Ron again from Eau Claire. Oh, I don't know if I did um, this one. Shoot. Cutbacks uh, and 53-man rosters are finalized, and um, I uh, was really surprised at the Anders Carlson thing. Um, I think this is what we've gotten used to as Packers fans. Trying to generate an image on the fly here. Thompson way, which was to sometimes hold on to locally drafted players uh, a little bit too long. Right, right. And we saw it a lot with some of those uh, cornerback picks that, like uh, Rollins. That's everybody so funny. Were they Rollins and Demarius Randall? This one. And um, you know they just. They were kind of a weird pick to start with, and then they weren't really showing out, but they stuck with them still for way too long, and then they just didn't really pan out to be uh, super great players. And uh, I think this kind of, to me, showcases the difference between Brian Gutekunst and Ted Thompson. I think um, Ted Thompson definitely... Did a lot. Did so many things with such an outstanding record and did things mm-hmm. the right way for so many reasons. But um, I think ultimately it's kind of nice to see them cut somebody before it becomes too late over something that seems like an apparent problem, you know, already. If that makes sense, you know, like I, and I, to me, I think. The, the the straw that probably bo- broke the camel's back for Andres Carlson was the fact that in the last preseason game, well, I, I could be completely wrong here, but that he missed that close one. You know, mm-hmm. it's almost like I, I don't care that much if you miss a couple long ones, but I want you to make 99% of the close ones. Sure. And I think that's what ultimately did him in was, you know, sure he's got a big leg and he can take, kick kick long ones and and he's kicked some pretty good ones from long distances but um i think what they really got tired of is like i don't know if we're going to get this extra point and that's going to come to bite us you know so um just the simple basic stuff i think is what he struggled with and so anyways um that's what i got uh also was really happy to see emmanuel wilson i'm excited to see him more so me too go back go yeah, he's a he's a good football player. I think everybody likes him. Everybody understands he's a he's a gifted runner. Um, I think the Packers maybe are a little nervous about some of the other stuff, but um, you know, as fans, we don't get to see it. We don't really know, and we don't really care, right? The guy, every time the guy touches the ball, he does things. It it reminds me of Aaron Jones, and I'm not saying he's Aaron Jones. I'm just saying it's similar in so far as I don't know how or why it works, but he makes it work. He he just has he just has he's a natural running back. And that's the thing about good football players is it, it doesn't make sense how or why. It's not based on speed or size or anything. They just have a natural feel for the game. And um, it's 
kind of the exact opposite of A.J. Dillon, and I hate to keep picking on the guy. Really appreciate Dillon. Really was optimistic about him. I, I defended him to the death because everybody was down on Dillon early. And, um, you know, I'm looking at PFF. He's one of the highest-graded guys, and it's like, you know, he's, he's whatever. Um, you know, and then that last year happened or whatever. But, I mean, the, the issue with Dillon just seems to be he's got all the intangibles. He's got the tools. The size-speed combo is unbelievable. But just the, he doesn't have a natural feel for the game. And so it just it just doesn't flow as naturally and as easily. It felt forced and like you could you could feel him thinking as he's playing, trying to and 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 I understand that because I'm looking at it going in real time. I couldn't freaking do that. It's an understandable thing, but that's the thing about great athletes. I you look at it and just go, how do you do that? I don't understand. Um but anyways, yes, very, very excited about um Emmanuel Wilson, and I agree. So a couple things you, you talked about. Um, I, I do. This is the first time I worry a little bit that we're going a little bit too far. And I shouldn't say that. I, I with the contracts pushing back with the all in with Aaron Rodgers, I, I wasn't super comfortable with that either. I am worried about getting rid of guys a little bit too early. Um, I, I think Ted Thompson, what he did really well is to understand. I mean, he he's kind of like. You know, those people that grew up in the Great Depression, they, they really understand how to get by with not very much. And that's what happens when you're a really good football team. You don't have salary cap space because you have a lot of talent and you have to pay them. You don't get the best draft picks because you don't, uh, you could, because you win too many games. So you're picking in the, the late 20s all the time. So you don't get the top picks. You very rarely have extra picks because you don't have much to trade. You know, you're you you just you're not trading anything. It's just it's you have very little, and you have to learn to do things the hard way. You have to be really good at at talent evaluation. You have to have really good coaches, and you have to really focus on development because you're not getting guys that you can just throw in there. You never even touch them. You get like a, a Joey Bosa, and it's like you don't have to teach this guy a freaking thing. He's so athletically gifted. He's just going to destroy everybody. A Miles Garrett or whatever. You don't need good coaching. You don't need good GMs. You don't need a good staff. And um, I think with Gutekunst, he kind of looks at it as, you know, the, the you have those parents who grew up in the in the Depression era, and they're like, you know, scrimping and saving and stitching all the, and it's like we don't have to be that crazy with it. So he goes in with with free agency, and he does a phenomenal job, and very much prove the point that that we should be doing more in free agency you just have to be good at it to, to be able to, to execute and he does do a good job but i i just worry that he's so focused on we have to win like we've got it and i understand like these these things are fleeting and if we don't do it now who's to say that um you're going to get another opportunity who's to say that you know jordan isn't going to go down or or whatever like you only get these small windows and you have to maximize them and i do understand that but I just feel, I worry that we're going to hollow ourselves out if we just throw out a bunch of developmental talent for this for the sake of, like, let's just do it now. That's what that's what teams that lose do, and I don't want to become one of those teams. And I'm not going to over-dramatize, you know, losing DeBose or AJJ because I don't think those guys were ever going to be premier talent, and obviously there's no place for them. I'm just saying, you know, Anders is an example. J.K. Scott is an example. And and that's just special teams, so maybe it's just, you know, he's he's focusing on the lower levels or whatever, but that's an area where I I really feel we need to be careful and not start going down this path of desperation. Cause that's where um you know, that's where you end up like a lot of these teams that are not good. You have these owners that start pushing, like we need it now, 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 and it just starts to send you down a spiral of doing bad things. <clears throat> I'm very happy though because we do have really good talent evaluators, and I do think a lot of this just has to do with, um, you know, I mean, look at those two specific examples. Like, why did AJJ, a potentially a guy that could develop into something, why is he gone? Because look at what we just did at safety, in free agency with Xavier McKinney. But then on top of that, the three safeties that we brought in, two of which look extremely promising. The third of which barely got any opportunities, but they really like his potential and his ability to kind of play a little bit of a different style of football that Halfley's going to be excited about. Look at a wide receiver. DeBose looks like he might be able to be something or, or do something. But when is this guy ever going to play? Because we hit on Watson. Because we hit on um, 
Reed and because we hit on Wicks and because we hit on Dobbs, you know, these these mid to late round guys as well as the second rounders. And that's the re and 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 because we hit on um Heath who seems to be a really good football player and because, you know, Bo Melton seems to be a promising guy that that can contribute. It it it's it's almost I hate to call it a luxury, but it's 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 a consequence, I guess, of, you know, we're going to have to get rid of guys that we ordinarily wouldn't have because we're doing such a good job. So, well, that's what we'll call it. Um, but I'm just, I'm just saying, a little worried about going down that path a little bit too much. Um, man, I did not do this one either. I got, I guess I didn't go this far. Um, who else did I get things for? Oh, is this? No, that's Joe in Connecticut. I just skipped Trucker Bob. All right, well, whatever. We'll do Trucker Bob, and we'll have to try to generate something live. Hey, Ryan. Trucker Bob here. Hey, Trucker Bob. I made it home to Florida. Nice, cool Florida. Why, you guys up there in Wisconsin, Chicago, Illinois area are enjoying 100-degree weather. It's uh, (laughs) in the 80s down here, so I'm enjoying myself. Anyways, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you last year. They say that every year averages 16 that made the playoffs won't make it again this year. Mm. So I thought I'd go through this and take a look. And in the AFC, the Ravens, Bills, Chiefs, Texans, Browns, Dolphins, and Steelers made it. And then I look at my list of teams. I thought, well, of those teams, let's say three of them don't make it. And I only came up with two, really only one, but yuck. Anyways, because of quarterback problems, I took the Browns out, and I'm going with Wilson is washed up and won't do so well with the Steelers. And I'm going to replace them with the Bengals and the Jaguars. Bengals quarterback is healthy, and I think the Jaguars quarterback will bounce back. So I'm going to just pick two teams. Browns and Steelers out, Bengals and Jaguars in. Now, the NFC, it's the 49ers, Cowboys, Lions, Buccaneers, Eagles, Rams, and Packers. And, well, this was really ugly, but you know what? The Eagles faded last year. I'm going to go with them, continue to fade. And the Buccaneers are going to be out also. And I'm going to pick the Saints. And the Falcons to get in. I'm kind of high in the Falcons. I think uh, yeah. with um, their new quarterback, that that's actually going to be a good team this year. Um, getting the uh, Vikings quarterback. So even though six are supposed to drop out, I only could choose four. I don't see anybody else coming in there. I'm not high in the Jets, and I'm not high in the Seahawks. Maybe the Colts could replace the Dolphins, but I doubt it. Anyway, six teams out, six teams in. I only chose four. I thought that was the only possibility. Be interested in seeing what you think of the teams that made it last year, the ones that won't make it this year, and then the new teams that will. I only chose four, so I'll say the same deal for you for four. Chuck or Bob out. All right, so here we've got the NFC teams that made it. 49ers, Cowboys, Lions, Bucks, Eagles, Rams, Packers, and then all the rest here. AFC, same thing. It's it's hard to not just parrot exactly what you said. Browns make the most sense uh, to be out. Bengals make the most sense to be in, I would say. Um, Jaguars could certainly be in. I don't think Colts, Raiders... Denver, the Jets certainly could be in. Um, I mean, some people are high on the Chargers with the uh, the coaching change, but I think they went backwards as far as personnel. Um, that's about all I got. So there's three teams that I could see getting in. Who would go out, though? I mean, Pittsburgh also, like you said. And... Miami is going to be in the playoffs. The Texans will be in the playoffs. Kansas City will be in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I can't kick any of these teams. There's almost no doubt in my mind, pending any kind of a, a catastrophic injury, 
you know, Baltimore makes sense just because, you know, they've had issues keeping Lamar healthy and, and either didn't get in or got close to not getting in and then immediately get exited because Lamar's not there. But without looking at injuries, it's really hard to imagine any of Miami, Houston, Kansas City, Buffalo, or Baltimore not getting in. So yeah, Cleveland and Pittsburgh would be the only two. I think of this group. I mean, Cincinnati, I want in. I you know they they were not long ago, and maybe I need to just update my thinking on this. But not long ago, they were really Super Bowl favorites. They've got a really talented quarterback, but can he get back to form? And do I want to bet on the Jets is really tough. I mean, I think if Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy, they can win. You know, I mean, <laughs> can, can they win three more games with Rodgers compared to the terrible group that they had? I think so. So, yeah, I would I would maybe go Cincinnati and the Jets. Um, NFC could go in a lot of different directions here. Certainly questions about the Rams. I know a lot of people are super high on the Rams. They're probably going to be in the playoffs, but there's question marks. Eagles, same thing. I mean, they could be a dominant team. They could be a terrible team. Tampa Bay, I think less so. You know, they were a nine-win team. They could certainly knock them out. Detroit, I don't see any reason for them to massively regress. They could regress, but I don't know about getting out of the playoffs. The only thing that would keep them out is if they're, you know, if the, if they don't win the division and then, you know, they're they're competing for the wild card spots and are not quite up. That that's going to be a big thing too. Um, who could be overtaken? You know, you could look at Dallas and say if Philadelphia wins the division and Dallas wins nine games or something, maybe they get left out. Um, something to that effect. I don't really know. Um, yeah, I, I uh, Tampa Bay is the easiest one to kick out. After that, mm, I would... Maybe I'm leaning Dallas or the Rams. Dallas won 12, though. As much as they're a disaster, I, I I would have to say the Rams, I guess, would be the one that's out. And then going in, I refuse to pick the Bears. Um, it's not going to be the Panthers. Arizona's interesting. I know they won four games, but I'm interested to see what their if their quarterback can come back healthy and, and whatever, if they could do something. It wouldn't be my top pick, but it's interesting. Falcons, I agree. With Cousins being there, really interested to see what they can do. Bears would be an option, but I refuse. Saints and Seahawks are all also options. So, yeah, I would do Tampa Bay and the Rams out, and then, I don't know. I mean, I, I'd really want to dig into it more to look at the team's rosters and all that, that, they've, that they've changed. But I will put Atlanta and... I'm struggling with Seattle. I just feel like that's a team that should not be as good as it is. I'll, I'll just say the Saints. I, I think that might have been what you said, but that's my answer. It's tough. With, without, you know, really looking at it, it's difficult to, uh, to have a solid answer, but that was my attempt. Uh, Nico, what's going hey, on? Hey, Ryan. This is Nico. I just want to say one thing. Mm. I'm going to be honest. I never thought I'd say this to a grown man. Oh, no. But I would love... To see your fingernails painted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I do a Nico? I think I did a Nico. Where's Nico? I just want to see him real quick. This is Nate. I'm just dying here. I didn't do a Nico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the worst. I apologize. Uh, Uncle Rico, what's going on? Yo, Ryan. It's your Uncle Rico. Oh, you were just talking about the new kicker and the extra points and I just wanted to remind you, not that it means anything, but just part of the conversation, that the extra point in college is a 20-yarder. Yeah. And the NFL is a 33-yarder. So when we're taking into account Narvison's kicking records or whatever, that his extra points are not NFL extra points. And right. Whatever, you know. I it's just want to remind you. Still 20. impressive, I think, the number. Later, bro. By the way, the fingernail thing, for those that are super creeped out and have no idea what's going on, I told my oldest daughter, who is now 18, when she was like five, six, seven years old, that if the Packers win the Super Bowl, um, she'd be able to paint my nails. And um, 
that has not come to pass. I don't even know if my oldest would care anymore. She could not care any less. But the younger girls would probably find that amusing. So hopefully, as weird, as weird as it was for you to say it, it's probably as weird for me to say it. I'm really hoping I get my nails painted very soon. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, all right. Who do we got coming up next here? Joe in Connecticut. Hey, Ryan. Joe, the janitor from Connecticut. What's up? Well, uh, it's Thursday, and that means it's exactly one week until football season starts. Oh, mm. I really hate the preseason. Mm. I'm one of those guys. Um, so I understand. You know, I'm kind of just excited now that um, things are about to kick off. We uh, kick off a week from tomorrow. Um, well, actually, I don't know if we kick off or who's going to kick off. Um, I know we signed that new kicker, but right. uh, chances are there might be a little switcheroo there. Honestly, I wish we got Crosby back. He'd probably still kick field goals uh, at least 40, 50 yards. So. But anyway, we're uh, past that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just excited. I got something to be excited about uh, football starting. Um I don't know if you guys saw in the news, but Connecticut got hammered with a flash flood. My town got 13 and a half inches in like three and a half hours and um, it destroyed a lot of major roads in my town. And uh, my 10 minute drive to my shop now takes me like 25 minutes because of the detours. And um, honestly, my house didn't get hammered like some people lost their house. So I'm just um, grateful for that. But um, yeah, maybe some prayers for my town in Connecticut. Um, anyway, uh, I will be calling a little bit more now that things are going. 53 set. I'm excited about the 53. Um, honestly, I really wasn't surprised besides Dylan being put on injured reserve. And I, I still have a, uh, questions and, and there needs to be some answers about that. So what, what the heck a stinger is? Uh, cause I'm pretty sure I smashed my arm on a sink today when I was, uh, turning a wrench and uh got a pretty good singer on my elbow um but i'm pretty sure i have to go to fucking work sorry nah. i have to go to work tomorrow um and do Come my tutorial duty well anyway just wanted to say hi i'll be calling back soon um i have been listening oh um, i listen every day so at least uh i have been here and uh and there's a lot of new callers on after dark um, not new callers, but new, more consistent callers, and uh, it's cool that the rotation that I've seen happen. Anyway, I'm going to go trying to get home, navigate through this crap. Um, anyway, Shalom. Shalom. Good to hear from you again. Um, that's the other thing with after, especially if I'm doing this, I'm not going to be able to, I mean, I guess if, that's the other thing, I, I can't look at it because then I, show everybody's phone numbers. I could pull that over to the other side. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll move it over here so I don't click on it and show everyone's numbers, and I can still see the swears coming because it's all transcribed. Try to catch them as best as I can. I try to keep it family-friendly and whatnot. Um, sometimes I fail. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry to hear about uh, what's going on out by you. I did not hear about that, but um, certainly hoping for the best for all of you and that things are getting better. We're several days past now. Um, I also like hearing that, you know, just the disdain people have. I, I get it all the time. Like, you know, I, I appreciate the show and everything. I just can't do the off-season stuff. Like, I just, I, I can't get into it. I can't follow it. And so knowing that there's a bunch of people that can't even get into the preseason, like they're still tuned out, I'm hopeful anyways that it's just, it just feels like a family reunion. Like once the season starts, everybody comes back. And I can't, I'm so excited for that. I want... I want everybody back, man. Come on. Come back. Let's have some fun. Season's starting. Let's get rocking. I'm pumped. Um, all right, who is next? Let's keep it rolling here. We got Nate Dog. Let's I'm actually gonna pull this over real quick so we can do what I said I was gonna do. Let's play Nate's call. Here we go. Hey Ryan, it's Nate. Um, just wanted to call in because I, I would just finished your latest episode. You were talking about the Packers Hall of Fame, and you said you'd never been there. One, 
you definitely should go check it out. Um, it was awesome. I haven't done it since I was like 16. Uh, my family went there when, you know, I was a teenager, but, um, one of the coolest things I think I've ever gotten to go see, just seeing the memorabilia and everything. And, um, it, they, they, it really is super interactive too. Like, uh, you can like, uh, you know, read about all these different guys, some people you've never heard of and, there's a history and, uh, yes, there are like, a like a statue or a little bust of, uh, I think all, all or most of the big name players have a, have a bust in there. Um, there's also a place where you can, um, you can try the Lambo leap, um, to see if you can do it. They've got a little like statue guy, uh, like up on the top of it showing like how high the, the players get. And you can <laughs> uh, see if you can also jump that high. It's pretty cool. Um, and then at least when I did it, there was a full tour of, um, Lambo Field and we got to, um, go down and see the field. They even let us take a step out onto the field, which, man, man, stepping on that grass was, uh, something else. I can't, I can't even describe it to you, but, um, other than that, um, I, I, I'm still upset about the, the players that we lost off of our practice squad. I'm really pissed about Michael Pratt. Like, yeah, that one. I don't understand real bad. that theory at all. Why would you use a draft pick? I don't know. This guy, I know it wasn't like a good draft pick, but then you immediately lose him. Yeah. After he did show some flashes, like serious flashes. And I, I don't know. It's upsetting, but uh, but yeah, Packers Hall of Fame. Go check it out. Go check it. The only thing I can really think is, first of all, they just were not impressed by Pratt, and they never seemed to be when they talked about him. It was like, uh... and then the other thing is, I think this year in particular, by the time they got into the later picks, they really didn't like any of the players. I mean, that's still a lame excuse. I mean, we got some good players. I mean, King seems to be a really solid player. He's still on the roster, seventh round pick. We got undrafted free agents that are showing promise that are on the practice squad. So it's 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 kind of a lame excuse, but I, I just. I don't know that they put a lot of stock in the seventh-ish round and beyond. And so if it doesn't work out, they didn't super care. And I, for whatever reason, um, they didn't like it. Or, or I, I guess the other way to look at it, too, is they really wanted to take a swing at Malik Willis. And so now you're looking at it and saying, what do we do? And I think they were looking at it and saying, what do we do anyways? Because they wanted Clifford to be the number two, so they probably end up trying to get him on the practice squad anyways. So once they pick up Malik Willis, it's like, well, we'll see how it goes. You know, I mean, maybe we end up stashing two quarterbacks. I, I don't know. And then when Pratt got picked up, it's like, well, that solved that problem. Um, just from my perspective, though, I, I, you know, as you know, I was a huge fan of Pratt in college. I was excited that we picked him up. I was beyond excited how good he was in training camp. I was beyond excited how good he was in preseason and then, uh, just, I mean, I, I, it, I'm feeling more and more like Gutekunst and his staff are becoming just fans, you know, and I don't, I don't necessarily mean that to be a pejorative, just the way fans think is is sort of what's happening. And by that, I, I mean like short memories. The guy was great, but he looked terrible the last time we saw him out there on the field. That's what's most pronounced. Look at our kicker situation. He was doing great for like two weeks. He didn't miss a freaking thing. He misses a 32-yarder. That's it. You're done. And we're going to go get some random guy we don't even know, so... I don't know, man. I can't fully explain what the heck is going on, but um, that's just how she goes, I guess. Um, I'll tell you what, we're pushing an hour. Why don't we go ahead and call it? We've only got one, two, three, four, five calls from Devin, Garrett, Steve, and Jesse. Two from Garrett. That's how you get to five. Uh, so make sure you get your calls in. That's probably not enough for another episode. So uh, 608-501-0718 is the number two call. And why don't we have this nice little jingle get us up out of here. The name of the song, by the way, is the Fade Away Blues, making fun of the Dallas Cowboys. You guys have a good rest of your day. America's name they use to say same old play a blue and silver but the skies are gray in the playoff they always fade away 